Thank you, Ken. Thank you all for being here this morning. So I am not Mark Schindler once again. I'm Mark Berry, and I'm honored to be here this morning. Since the our pastors and the whole most of the congregation are at Zephyr Cove, they trusted me to do this morning. <laughs> so I'm really grateful for those of you that are here. The talk title this morning is "You Are Awesome." You believe that? Yes. In your okay, great. Not only in the mind, but you feel it in your heart. You feel it in your gut. Let's try an affirmation. We use affirmations here. Unity knows about affirmations, and we're not afraid to use them. And so let's try an affirmation. I deserve the best. Say that back to me. I deserve the best. Notice how good that feels in your gut, in your heart, and your mind. I deserve the best. And you do. And if you don't know that completely, you will in just a few minutes. Why do we use affirmations? We use affirmations, it's like uh, when you have a computer and you take it into the shop to have the viruses and the malware removed. We do that to the greatest computer you'll ever find in the entire universe, the computer between your ears. We use affirmations to reprogram. To reprogram what? To reprogram the stuff that we inherited from the last generation. The stuff we inherited from our elders and our teachers. And I don't know if you've ever heard any of those, uh, those old tapes. You know, like money doesn't grow on trees, who do you think you are anyway, yada, yada, yada. So we, so we wind up thinking, well, who am I to deserve the best? Well, uh, maybe, you know, maybe Mahatma Gandhi, maybe uh, Martin Luther King, maybe Mother Teresa, maybe the person sitting in the pew next to me. But me? No, I remember, I remember those old tapes, you know? You're not good enough, you're not quick enough, you're not tall enough, you're not enough. So that's why we use affirmations. I deserve the best. And also, our, we might ask ourselves, well, okay, we go, to a, we go to what everybody else calls a feel-good church, right? We go to one of those feel-good churches. And I have friends who are Jewish and Catholic, and they they love their thousands and thousands year old tradition and all the wise people that have led that tradition. And I totally respect that. And yes, I go to a feel good church. Where else would I want to go? It's Sunday morning, right? <laughs> Affirmations, are they godly? Let's see the screen, Jacob. It says in Joel 3.10, let the weakling say, I am strong. In Proverbs, it says, we are snared by the words of our mouth. Proverbs again says, life and death are in the power of our tongue. That's all from the Old Testament. And now, from the New Testament, you know, the New Testament is called the Gospel, and the word Gospel means the good news, right? So here's some of the good news. The good news from John 10.10 10 is, Jesus said, I came that you should have life fully. Some translations say, abundantly. The master of life, the son of light, came and said that you should have life and have it abundantly. Whew. And then Matthew 5.14, one of my favorite quotes from the entire Bible, which Linny already put in our meditation. Jesus said to his followers, aren't we all followers of the man who lived 2,000 years ago? I think we are. Jesus said to his followers, in other words, the people in this room, you are the light of the world. Not one of the lights of the world, not, um, yeah, not one of the lights of the world. You are the light of the world. That's the way the translation came down, and I believe that you are. There's an area um, where it's okay to be selfish when we talk about you are the light of the world and you are here to have life and have it abundantly. And it sounds weird, you know, for a Sunday speaker to talk about it's okay to be selfish. Where's well, uh, this guy coming from? But it is. And you already know it, and I'm just here to remind you. Remember the time 
that you said some kind words to someone that needed to hear a kind word? Remember that time that you said a compliment to somebody that just, you could just see them light up? Remember that time that you did a kindness for somebody, expecting nothing or little in return? Remember how good you felt? It's okay to be selfish. It's okay to give without any other expectation of receipt, except that it feels so good to do it. That was a real realization for me a few years ago when I, was when I started pastoring the church in uh, Rose, Unity of Roseville. I was there for three years and I discovered that the more I did for others, the better I felt about myself. Didn't expect that. I thought I'd get thanks from others, but I don't need the thanks from others. When I do a kind deed, say a kind word, something uplifting for another human being, feels so good in here. So, yeah, in that way, it's okay to be selfish. That which we send out benefits the sender as well as the, as well as the receiver. I love the way the Dalai Lama said this, His Holiness the 14th, the Dalai Lama. He was asked a question one time from a person in the audience, and they said, what can we do about the, the horrible condition of the world? Well, I don't agree with that question. So I was real interested to hear what he was going to say. And what he said is, basically, I don't see it that way. He said, I'm paraphrasing, of course, he said that, of course, there's good and evil in the hearts of men, and therefore in the world, of course. But the good is getting better all the time, and it has to continue to get better all the time. And this is not a faith thing. This is not a Buddhist philosophy thing. This is not a belief thing. It's scientific fact. Because when a person thinks an evil or a bad or a negative thought about anyone, they have to have a specific focus for that. It could be a group, but it has to be a specific focus. And when we think an evil or negative thought, it harms the sender. However, as we know, when we think a good, a positive, an uplifting, affirming thought, that could be for the whole world. That can benefit everybody, and it benefits the sender as well. And, and when we think about it, the human race, we're doing better than we ever have before. We're much more conscious of ecology and, and human rights and, and equal rights and uh, peace. Then humans are doing better than they ever have. Of course, we've got... We've got stuff to fix, of course, we've got stuff to work on. Isn't that part of being a human? We've always got stuff to work on. But as a race, I'm so glad to be here and to be part of this race with you guys because we're doing better than we ever have before. <coughs> and we'll continue to do so. So let's turn up the volume on that affirmation a little bit. How about try this one on for size and see how it feels. I deserve the very best. Say that back. I deserve the very best. Notice how that feels. Who am I to say that you are awesome? That's a pretty bodacious statement to make, isn't it? Does anybody happen to know what my license plate says on my car? Anybody here happen to know? Say it. You are you, great. You are great. My vanity plate says, you are great. I really believe that. The only reason it doesn't say you are awesome is because I'm not bright enough to figure out how to do that with seven characters in space. <laughs> but that's what it means. When you see my plate, and do, read my plate. You are awesome. And don't forget it. Okay? There's, there's, there's going to be times, there's going to be days when we're not our best. You know, I'm not, oh, I'm not feeling all me today. I'm not, I'm not at my best today. Maybe we didn't get enough sleep or whatever circumstances out there or whatever. In a time like that, please remember, read my plate, you are great. That's not just a belief. That's not just something that I want you to take on faith. I believe that it's scientific fact. I believe that because of your uniqueness. And uh, just, just a few Sundays ago, Reverend Mark said the wonderful joke that I love. 
you are unique, just like everyone else. <laughs> Excuse me, and it's true. But think about it. Let's just use logic for a minute. Think about it. No one can speak your words. No one can walk your walk. No one can dance your dance. No one can sing your song. No one has ever lived or will ever live who can receive the love that is yours to receive. No one can give the love that is yours to give. You are precious. You are awesome. It's true. I have a little story from my, from my past that I want to share with you right now. I was... I was just moving out of my mom's apartment in San Francisco. I was already in college. I was already working my way through college, working swing shift at a bank. When you work swing shift, you get off every workday. You get off at midnight. All your friends are asleep. So we just, these uh, three fellas and I, we just kind of naturally migrated together. So every, you know, we'd get off work at midnight. Now it's time to have dinner, kick back, you know. They'd roll and smoke some funny little things. I'd drink my wine. And this is what we did every day at midnight because we just got off work, just like you feel when you get off work. And I was ready to get my own place, and I noticed that each of us had a little studio apartment in somewhere in San Francisco, which is not inexpensive. And so I had this brilliant idea, because I wanted a nice place. I had this brilliant idea. Why don't we all go together? Since we're all hanging out together all the time anyway, why don't we have this idea? Why don't we see about maybe getting a nice place together. And we did. We found a nice neighborhood, nice big old Victorian, five bedroom flat on the top floor of this Victorian, this nice neighborhood. And it was way less money than we would have been spending individually. It was a good move. So now we're living in this nice neighborhood. And in this nice neighborhood, there was a really nice little neighborhood market right across the street. One of those fancy markets, you know, upscale. So we always shop two blocks down at Safeway. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> we bought the Wonder Bread, you know, that had the balloon, the colors, you know, the white, flat, you know, Safeway. One day it was unseasonably warm, especially for San Francisco. And I decided that I wanted something refreshing and cool, and I wasn't quite sure what that was. But I, I thought, you know what? I'm feeling adventurous today. I am going to go on a journey. I'm going to go into that fancy little market. I'm going to be brave enough to do that. Right? I have no reason to feel uh, other than out of place there. I knew it was a fancy market because the cars out in front, they were late model cars, some were imported. They had hubcaps on all four corners. So I knew. <laughs> this, remember, I'm 20, 19, 20 years old. I was impressed by these things. These people knew how to do stuff that I didn't have those life skills. So I ventured through the parking area and I went into the store. Oh my God. There's all these people in there that look like they know what they're doing. There's all these people with nice haircuts. Their belts match their shoes. I mean, these, you know, I wasn't real comfortable, but I was brave. I was on this journey. I was on this quest. So I kept venturing deeper into alien territory. And I found my way to the produce section. And I saw a watermelon there. And I thought, ooh, that's the idea. And it was so big. I knew none of our refrigerator shelves would hold that thing. And, and I wasn't sure if my roommates were home to help me eat that huge thing. So I, okay, maybe. Now let me look around a little further. I looked down a little further, and there I saw it. A mountain of cantaloupe. That's what I want. That's what I came in here for. Uh, cantaloupe. But which one? <laughs> so many. Well, I'd seen my mom shop all my life. I'd seen her thump the cantaloupe and listen to it and squeeze it and smell the stem in, you know. Well, I could thump and squeeze and sniff with the best of them, except I had no idea what I was supposed to be squeezing and sniffing for. You know? <clears throat> Apparently, somebody noticed my dilemma because I heard from the side, may I help you? I turned to the voice, and there was this little old man in a green grocer's apron. And he had little white fender skirts around his ears, you know, and he had sparkly blue eyes and big white toothy grin. May I help you? And naturally, I looked to see if there was a grown-up that he was talking to. But it was just me. And I said, I, um, 
I, I need a cantaloupe. He said, well, let me help you find the very best one. And this guy, remember this alien territory, I mean, this guy proceeds to squeeze and sniff and thump the whole mountain of cantaloupe. And I'm already feeling so self-conscious. I'm like, well, just give me a cantaloupe. I'm on my way. You know, oh God. He's just giving me all this attention and all this service. And finally, he picks one. And he turns to me. And he holds it in both hands. And he offers it out to me. And he says, here, this is the very best one. This is the one for you. Well, I took it in my hands, but I didn't feel real comfortable. In fact, I opened my mouth, and these words actually came out. I said, but if you give me the very best one, well, what about the next person? And he says, I swear his eyes got more twinkly blue and his green got even bigger. He said, I'll help them find the very best one that's here when they arrive. And he turned to stacking his grapes. And now I'm left with, for me, I'm left with this, the most precious is pearl of great price. The very best one for me? Well, they didn't have a quick checkout in that little market. They had two checkers with three carts lined up in each, so I didn't get to run out of there feeling all the stuff I was feeling. I got to stand there holding this precious, precious gift. And for a young man starting out, I got to think about things while I was standing there waiting to check out. I got to think about concepts like deserving, Worthiness, self-image, self-love. Well, as you already know, that was the best cantaloupe I've ever had in my life. <laughs> but I was still thinking about the encounter with the, the green grocer guy. And when I had time in between school and work and buses, when I had a few minutes, I lived in that neighborhood for eight months after that occurrence. And every once in a while I'd go in there, I'd, I'd, I'd take a peek in the market and I'd walk down the front and I'd look down the aisles to see if that guy was there. Because now I'm, I'm thinking of him as my grocery store guru. <laughs> he really helped me. And I'm wondering, is he, is he the kind of a guru that, that, that just popped in, the kind of angel that just popped in for that one day to help a young man find his way? Or Maybe he's the kind of a guru that wore that little green apron for 30 years and helped many people find their way. Well, I don't know because I never saw him again. I never got to encounter anything with him again. So when this life is over and I get to transition to the next life, when I get access to the Akashic Record, the knowledge of all things, that's the first thing I'm going to look up, to look up the nature of that encounter with my grocery store guru. Now, as you listen to this story, you probably identify with one of the characters in the story. I don't know for you if you identify more with the teacher, with the angel guru who helps others along their way. Or maybe you identify more with that young person just starting to find their way. Or maybe you identify more with the precious, the very best, the pearl of great price. Well, here's what I believe. I believe that you are all three. That's the grocery store guru. And no one ever had, as I said before, no one has ever deserved more than you or better than you, and no one ever will. And one of our great teachers, uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith, slide, one of our uh, best teachers says it this way. He says, you are a unique expression of infinite possibilities. My wife, Joy, says we live in a shimmering field of infinite possibilities. Every scientist, not just philosophers and theologists, every scientist will tell you we live in a field of infinite possibilities. And as you know, you are a unique expression of in this universe of infinite possibilities. And then Michael says, when you become aware you begin to act, think, live the life that expresses that. So go ahead, express that. Let's, let's turn up the volume on that affirmation just one more notch. How about, I deserve the very best of everything. Can you say that? I deserve the very best of everything. 
I believe it. I think I feel it. In my heart, in my head, in my gut. I hope I did. When you greet one another, hopefully you see that. You know, we see the, the light of God, we see the Christ presence in each other, and we see, I mean, you are God. You are God's arms and legs. You are, you're the God that I can see and touch and feel and talk to. Hopefully you feel that awesomeness. If, if I ever see you out on the street or here on a Sunday morning, and I greet you, and you don't feel like, <sighs> it's you! If you don't ever feel, if I accidentally have something on my mind and I walk past you and, and you don't ever get that, I apologize. I apologize to you and I apologize to me because I missed an opportunity and that's the way I feel. You are awesome. This is a really good feeling. I want you to have it. I want you to have it when you see another person in this room, when you go home and see your neighbor or your other family members. When you go to the office and you see your colleagues, they are too. Most of all, when you walk by a shiny store window, when you look in the mirror, it's okay to have that feeling. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> now that you know that you are awesome. Well, what do we do with that? That was a nice Sunday morning. What do we do now? What we do now is practice. What practice? Your practice. Your practice may be practicing unity principles. Your practice may be studying Eckhart Tolle or Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Michael Beckwith. Your practice might be transcendental meditation. You might be a practitioner of Baptist or Buddhist or, doesn't matter, atheist, agnostic. your practice. Thank you for being here this morning. God bless you all.